Okay, hello. Uh, so my name is Claire Corkill. I'm the Development Manager at the Council for British Archaeology. Um, and my part in this is going to be brief um, because I'm just going to do a really short introduction um, to the project that we've been doing with Sophia um, before I hand over to her. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, I'm based at the Council for British Archaeology, which my colleague Debbie very nicely introduced for us before, if you don't know anything about us. And Zulfia is based at the University of York. Um, and we worked with um, Zulfia and colleagues at um, the Department of Theatre, Film, I always get this wrong, Television and Interactive Media, um, to um, develop this project, uh, which was funded by XR Stories. Um, so Zulfia did a master's by research. Um, in order to deliver this. Um, and essentially, our aim was to look at how we could explore the potential of digital storytelling um, methods to reach new audiences. Um, so just a little bit about our goals. And um, these kind of are drawn from the CBA's uh, vision and mission, and also um, our aims in our current business plan. And essentially, we wanted to really think about how we could develop a project that would enable us to look at creating more inclusive storytelling in archaeology, bring in um, different audiences who may not always be represented in the stories we tell, but also in their um, participation in archaeology. Um, and we drew some of that um, thinking from uh, a diversity review that we've recently undertaken as an organisation. Um, we wanted to make archaeology a bit more relevant to the public, so we've tried to explore ways in which we can think about archaeology in less traditional ways, um, as Sophia will, will talk to you about um, in a moment. Um, and again, bringing in new perspectives and creating spaces for people to tell their own stories. Um, so it was really um, designed to be a co-creation project and really flexible and fluid to enable the participants to be able to share their experiences, their lives um, and their stories. And I shall say no more because Zulfia is going to tell you all about how she developed and delivered the project for us. Over to you. Thanks for that introduction, Claire. Um, so just to talk about myself a bit, I'm not an archaeologist, so I feel like I should tell a little bit about my background. So my background is in documentary filmmaking. I've trained in filmmaking in the US, uh, but I'm originally from India um, and I've directed short documentaries in both countries and I'm mostly focused on human-centered stories, which include stories of migration. Um, and I've, I've also worked with nonprofits uh, producing videos related to social justice issues. And so having practiced more traditional filmmaking, I started questioning this very single lens approach to storytelling, where I was just directing the films. And I was getting more interested in co-creative methods um, of storytelling. And I learned that the interactive documentary storytelling is a form that allows for more inclusive practices. Um, and so my interests fit really well with the CBA's goal of what Claire just mentioned is, how do we create a space for people to tell their own stories? And so this was a research project that I did as part of my master's by research. It was an MSc in interactive media uh, at the University of York. And these are briefly the seven steps that um, I followed through a period of one year. So to start it off, I interviewed staff from the Council for British Archaeology. Um, and this was just to learn about their priorities around storytelling, what's important to them. Um, and then I conducted a brief literature review because since I don't come from an archaeology background, just to get an understanding about um, how archaeology storytelling has been told in the UK. Um, and then based on that information, I developed a film concept. Uh, and then we recruited participants and I conducted a participatory film workshop with them. Uh, and then we co-created these stories together. Um, and then finally, I designed the interactive documentary and then concluded the research after getting feedback from both the CBA as well as the participants. So I won't be going through each of these too much in detail, but I'll kind of give you like an overview of the rest of the project. And so... When I did the interviews with the CBA, there were three main themes that emerged from these interviews. So the first one was about shifting perspectives. So how can storytelling be an agent of change? And this came from finding that narratives around archaeology and heritage has historically been dominated by stories of upper middle class white people. 
So how do we shift that to hear stories from those who are underrepresented? Um, and how can storytelling shift these perspectives? Uh, the second theme that came out through these interviews with the CBA was how can we make these stories real? Um, so let's hear stories of the everyday person. Um, just focus on the day-to-day -day lives of normal people. What does archaeology mean to them? Like one of the interviewees said, it's the little stories for the little people which is more interesting. And I thought this really summarized um, that particular theme really well. And finally, the third theme that came through was that personal heritage means home, family, and community. Um, and so I started to understand that heritage is a very personal concept to people. Uh, like one of the interviewees said, if I think of my heritage, then actually I just think about my family, where I've come from, and my heritage is my roots. And so as we spoke about these ideas around personal heritage and how one, one feels connected to place, Questions emerged around what this connection might mean to someone who's moved to the country. So what could heritage and archaeology mean to, to an immigrant? And so the, that, that's what the larger question then began for the research is how has archaeology and heritage influenced an immigrant's sense of place? So making connections for place with immigrants, uh, like one of the interviewees said, for people who weren't born in this country, how do you get them involved in making the place where they live theirs and feeling that connection. So how do we move away from colonial narratives, especially because the UK is such a melting pot of cultures. And also I learned that the CBA's membership right now is mostly white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And so I could see that there was a need to reflect the diversity of UK's population more. And so I understood that the CBA really cares about diversity and storytelling. So how can I as a storyteller help bridge this gap? And so how, where does the <coughs> interactive documentary come through all this? Um, so just to kind of explain what the interactive documentary means, it's an emerging form of documentary storytelling, which, which has come through the rise of digital media and the web 2.0. And the most popular definition of the iDoc, which is short for interactive documentary, was given by someone called Aston and Godenzi who define it as any project that starts with an intention to document the real and that uses digital interactive technology to realize this intention. And so the interactive documentary allows for more participatory processes with an increased level of individual engagement. Um, and unlike the traditional linear documentary where you just passively view one film from beginning to end and then that's the end of your experience of watching that film. The IDOC, on the other hand, tends to be nonlinear. And so you can have multiple stories which, um, which makes the user engage a little bit more with the stories. Um, and finally, the IDOC also has a scope to be what's termed the living documentary. And this was a term coined by Godenzi, who, who had defined the IDOC earlier. Um, where she says that IDOCs can grow and evolve over time. So the film doesn't just end with one film, but this can be a long-term project where you can add more stories and the non-linear um, quality of the IDOC helps in building this. And so the film concept that we came um, together after all of this information is that Let's create an IDOC that captures personal everyday stories of archaeology and heritage from immigrants in the UK. And the approach that I took was co-creation. And like Claire mentioned at the beginning, the CBA was interested in how do we um, develop co-creative methods of working with communities. And so the IDOC was the ideal storytelling tool because the IDOC by itself has co-creative methodologies in its way of creation. And so to define what co-creation means. This was um, this has been defined by Kat Sizek and William Uricio from the MIT in their book Collective Wisdom. And they say that in co-creation, projects emerge out of process and evolve within communities and with people rather than being made for or about them. And Mandy Rose in 2015 says, co-creation is a shared process of meaning making. And so basically, co-creation is a way of creating media through a lens of equity and justice. Um, and it challenges inequalities by bringing transparency to the power dynamics that are entrenched in media production. Um, and so it becomes a space where people can tell their own stories and it's inclusive and democratic. And so what did we do next? So we 
uh, recruited participants who came from immigrant backgrounds. And, and we did this through CBA's network. We sent out an email just asking for people to get in touch with me. Um, and after I got a few participants who were interested, I conducted a participatory film workshop with them. This was done online. And uh, I conducted a few activities. And, and the goal for this workshop was really just to have people think about ideas about archaeology and heritage from a personal point of view. So this, for example, was a word bubble that uh, everyone created. And I just asked them, what does archaeology mean to you? And everyone just started typing their own interpretations of that. Similarly, for heritage, too, they started typing out their own interpretations of that. So lots of interesting answers here. Conflict, identity, home, culture. That's what heritage meant to someone. Um, and archaeology is, again, culture, the experience of being human. Um, so after this, uh, the, the next activity we did was drawing out personal journey timelines. And this was actually based on uh, my own timeline that you can see here, Zulfia's UK timeline, which I did as an example because I myself and I'm a, uh, am an Im immigrant from India. Uh, and so I just gave them that as an example. And then everyone started drawing their journeys in the UK um, and their family histories and however they kind of thought about um, how they saw their immigrant journey in the UK. But the most important thing of this activity was identifying place. So I asked each of them to identify one place that they that meant something to them in the UK. And then this was another activity we did where I showed them a series of photographs and asked them to just pick an image that resonates with each of them. Um, and this was basically to just start helping to visualize the story so that people can start thinking about what their own stories may look like, think about what photographs they may have, what videos they may have. So this was an exercise. And in fact, all of these pictures are ones that I took, um, which I revealed to them later on. But it was an interesting way of seeing what, what kinds of pictures people related to and why. And so after we did the workshop, we started co-creating the stories together. So these are images of the participants themselves. Two of them, Annabelle and Therese, I'll be showing you a little bit of their stories now. Um, so after the workshops, we started working on individual themes based on each person's story. And so I worked with them and um, wrote a script based on the conversations I've had with them. And then based on that uh, film script, each of the participants started writing their own narrations of their stories. Um, and then I asked them to record those narratives uh, and they send them the they send me the audio files of those narrations and then I edited those films. Um, and so I'll now show you just a little snapshot of each of these characters' stories. Hi everybody, I'm Annabelle. Um, I'm from the United States and I moved to the UK to study and do my all-time favorite topic and one of the best topics ever archaeology. So here's my insane, fun, and slightly adventurous archaeological journey, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so that was Annabelle's intro video, which is on the platform, which I'll show you later. Uh, and I'll just show you one more video of Annabelle so you get a little bit a better sense of her story. So this is one where she talks about her personal identity and her connection to the work that she does. As a mixed black woman, I never really saw people who look like me in TV shows and movies. So, my master's dissertation looked at how people of African descent were depicted throughout the Roman Empire. I really like this topic and I'm passionate about it. It's because I'm curious to learn about how people who look like me were depicted in history. Now, I always thought it was weird that Africans were missing in these depictions of ancient Rome, whether they be TV shows or movies or even documentaries sometimes. And this is because the empire also covered parts of Africa and it wasn't like, you know, people didn't travel. Okay, I'll now show you a little bit of Teresa's video, who was the other participant in this project. This is her intro video. Hello, my name is Teresa Yan. I'm from Hong Kong and moved to the UK last year. I'm glad that I have this opportunity to share my story with you. I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you very much. Okay, and 
one video to just show you a little bit of Teresa's story. So in this video, she talks about why UK heritage is important to her. Heritage sites in the UK are so important to me because they are my textbooks of British history and culture. By visiting heritage sites here, I learned a lot about how people live in this country, how people think about this country, and what things they appreciate the most. For example, when I visit Harewood House, which is a country house in West Yorkshire, I discovered that British people in the past loved Chinese painting so much that they used Chinese wallpaper as hairwood. I felt connected to British culture when I saw this as hairwood. Also, since heritage is a subject area of my studies, it gives me an opportunity to connect with amazing people in the UK. I got a chance to work for the Council for British Archaeology during my student placement. As a youth engagement contact creator, I made several educational resources for the Young Archaeologist Club as well as contributed to the Festival of Archaeology this year. The CBA team is super friendly and inclusive. Without learning about heritage, I might not have a chance to be included in this country in a short period of time. So these are just two videos to give you a little snapshot of each of the uh, participants, but there are more on the iDoc, which you can see, and we we have also been uh, we will also display that uh, on our CBA stall downstairs. Uh, but just to give you a sense of what this iDoc looks looks like, it's basically an online platform with these stories, and so this is the landing page where when you open the iDoc, and then you see both the participants on it, Annabelle and Teresa whose videos you just watched. And if you click on Annabelle, for example, you'll be taken to her story page. Uh, and so I showed you one of these videos, but there are more which tells you a little bit more about her story. And you can pick and choose whichever part of the story you want to watch. You can re-watch it uh, and go back and watch Teresa's story. So, you, so I have more of uh, Teresa's videos as well on it. You've seen one of these. Um, and so, and there's a pop-up page as well that tells you about the project and there's more to explore at the bottom. Um, and this is just to give you an, a sense of how the background, it's called a mind map on the iDoc platform. So it, it shows you the various interactions between the videos, which you can also check out on the platform. Um, and so just to give you like how I concluded this research, right now it's at this stage where I've completed creating this prototype of the iDoc with these two stories. Um, but just a summary of the conclusions that uh, I have so far after speaking with both the CBA as well as the participants who took part in this project. The first one is that the participatory process and the co-creation of the films really encouraged the participants to own their own stories. Uh, like one of them said, I enjoyed the fact that I was able to write the script myself and not really being told what to say and what to leave out. I just like being able to tell my own story in my own words. And secondly, also just breaking stereotypes. So people talked about the importance of immigrant stories. And one of the participants told me, not everyone in British archaeology and heritage are from the UK. And so these stories show you that. Um, and also, they said including immigrant stories can break the stereotype that British heritage is for white middle class people. Um, thirdly, it also tells a non-traditional uh, uh, archaeology story. For example, Annabelle's story, um, you'll see, has a very non-traditional journey into archaeology. Um, but also, the stories have their own value in introducing non-traditional approaches to archaeology through an immigrant perspective, which opens up new avenues of engagement in the sector.
And the interactivity also helps improvement from the feedback that I've got, uh, where people said that the nonlinear nature of the stories helped them switch between the two stories. Uh, and it also gave the viewer greater flexibility in rewatching them, seeing, seeing similarities and differences between both the participants' journeys. Um, it helps in shifting dominant narratives. Uh, like one of them again said, it shifts the viewer from the traditional image of the archeologist as a white male. And the CBA interestingly gave me feedback that it's helped them in changing their behaviors or at least starting the process of that, um, where the process has influenced their learning and understanding as an organization, emphasizing how the IDOC's non-traditional way of presenting archeology span has affected their ways of thinking around storytelling that come from more traditional approaches. Um, and this points to the larger impact that the IDOC process has had on the organization's thinking and also the impact of innovation and creativity on widening perspectives. Um, and finally, it's demonstrated the potential of the IDOC in building inclusive participation in archaeology uh, narratives. Of course, it has a lot of challenges, but I'm not going to go into that now. But these are sort of the more positive uh, feedback that I thought is worth mentioning here. And um, yeah, I'll hand it back over to Claire to kind of take you through some of the challenges and the next steps for the CBA with this project. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sophia. Um, so yeah, just just to kind of wrap up, really. Um, We've 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 created this IDOC, and I hope you'll all come to the CBA stand and have a look at it. Um, you're getting a sneak preview because we haven't made it live on the website yet, but imminently we will be doing so. Um, we're really keen to to share this as broadly as possible and to get feedback from people to see how um, they think it works, to see um, if they think it's a, a good way of of sharing these different stories, um, and we're really keen to kind of see how we can make that move to actually reach different audiences using this. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges is how do we promote this and reach the people that we're not normally reaching um, through our work. We've been really fortunate that we've been able to bring in some brilliant participants in Teresa and Annabelle to tell their stories. We really want to be able to um, get those stories out now to people who don't necessarily see themselves. Um, as Annabelle said at the, in, in her video, they don't necessarily see themselves represented in archaeology at the moment. Um, so there's, there's definitely challenges for us there um, in, in thinking about how we do that, who we work with to promote these videos. And we'd really like to, to, to create some more as well and, and build um, the platform and add more stories to that so we can represent more people there. Um, and I think we've also got a real challenge in thinking about how we go forward with this idea of creating inclusive um, participatory content that is reflective of society more broadly, um, not just kind of um, within archaeology, but society as a whole. Um, making that shift and bringing people um, on board, um, changing thinking about who the CBA are and who we are for, um, who we want to engage with, is not something that we can fix overnight. It's, it's, it's a slow process to um, create that change and to enable people to see that we want to work with them um, and that we want to engage with them and listen to their ideas and find ways of creating content that they feel is relevant to them. So that's something that we will be building into a much bigger kind of picture as part of the, the CBA's kind of mission moving forward. Um, and obviously that all involves finding additional funding and staffing to enable us to create that content. Um, Sophia probably didn't really mention, you know, the time that she spent working with those individuals um, throughout this project. You know, once um, they were on board and they did the workshop, that was one thing, but there was a lot of time spent and, and I think friendships developing as, you know, through that process as they work together to share stories um, and create um, this piece of work. And I think, you know, we, we really shouldn't underestimate the amount of time and support that is needed to do pieces of work like this. So um, that's something we need to keep thinking about as we develop new projects and new methods of delivery um, as we go forward. Um, and yeah, I think I shall leave it there, but do please come and watch. And uh, we really look forward to hearing what you think. 
And thank you, Zulfia. That's the last thing to say. Thank you very much.